Okay, hello everyone. So welcome to C level zero. And today we are talking about on floor 16, the history of New Long Network. I'm very welcome everyone to join us. Okay, let's go. let's begin. First thing first. So as you know, someone know understand like uh what is the New Long Network, and someone oh they have no idea what is exactly the New Long Network is. So the New Long Network is something like brains and is potentially laden with the sun fiction con connotations of the Frankenstein mythos. This is the word from Kevin, University of Sheffield. Yeah, it's something like you try to mimic the system of the human or trying to create the human being or the artificial human being, something like that. And one more thing I find the sentence that describes the neural networks. This one is, I think it's perfect. Um, neural networks, their name and structure are inspired by the human brain mimicking the way that biological neurons signal to one another. That means neural network or artificial neural network. They got something that's inspired by the human biological system. And if you would like to read more about the neural network, so I recommend this one that yes, you can search on the internet and you can see a lot of the content of the neural networks or the book that described how neural networks work. Okay, before we get things start about uh, to know deeply about the neural networks. So I would like to take you get back to the time on 1950. Let you guess who is he? Yep, he is the Isaac Asimov. He is an American writer and professor of biochemistry at Boston University. Yes, he already uh, passed away. But he lived as something that very, very important. And he was born uh, in last year. Something that he lived to us is even he is an American writer and he also professor of biochemistry but he very interested in creating the content or the fiction about the science the science fiction yes and as you know many many movies that they produce is inspired by Isaac Asimov and that's from the fiction he's he's write down about the rules of the robot three things a lot the first one is a robot may not harm a human being, although in action allow a human being to come to harm. The second, a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And the last one of the law, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such a protection doesn't conflict with the first or the second law. This is the golden three laws of the robot from Isaac Asimov from his fiction. So what kind of the fiction that Asimov they produce, he, he produced? Yeah, as you know, he's produced, he create many, many science fiction about robot and Many writer or many creator they they get the inspiration from Isaac Asimov. As you know, the movie that I think you you watch it already, I am Lobot. And the game that very, very popular in the world. Yes, Lockman. Okay, so you get something, the idea that in 1950, there are many the science fiction that spread all over America. And people are went about like, oh, in the future, it will be like uh, the robots that can heal the human. But how how we can create an artificial intelligence? Yeah, trust me, yes, I can. So you know him, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, let's take back to the neuron network. So as you know that I described from the first page that the neural network is something that they get inspired by the biological system from the human being. And as you see this picture represents the neural cells, the nervous cells that uh, it's combined with the dendrite. Yeah, you can see the root of the uh, neural cells and you can see the axons. The dendrite, the dendrite uh, works as at least if the signal input signal and they and and they send the signal throughout the myelin sheet and the output is out come from the axon side yeah it's very complicated but there's someone 
they can do it. Okay, in 1943, there are two, there are two guys. The first one, Warren McElroy. So they, he, he and, he is an American neuropsychologist and cybernetician. He work a lot with the, uh, neuroscience and he work with water pit. He's good at the logic and he's logician who work in the field of the computational neuroscience. So as you know, they write down that, um, trying to create the mathematics formulation that mimics the biological neural network. And in 1957, Frank Rosenblatt, he has an American psychologist notable in the field of artificial intelligence. And please take a look at him. He trying to produce something or trying to create something that get inspired from from research from McCloy and, and Water Pit which in combined with the the psychological of uh, the research from HEPDO in 1949. Yes, that's the product he produced, Mark 1 Perceptron. Mark 1 Perceptron uh, is, is like uh, trying to the mathematical lo and logical formulation in this. How it works? The Perceptron is worked by if you have like um, the features of the data, we feed the features of the data like this into the Perceptron. The Perceptron combine two things. The first thing is combine the, the input and they sum, sum all the value of the input. They sum all the value of the input. And then after they sum, they pass the value to the activation function. And then they produce the final output. This is the first version of the neural network. We call them perceptron. And as you see on the picture, there's only one layer. You can see just only one layer. We don't count the input layer. We just count only the calculation uh, uh, calculation layer and then output layer. That's it. And as you can see, there's just only one node. Yes, the circle, we call them as a node. Yeah. And the edge. Yeah, we call it as edge. Yeah. So in 1969, Marvin Minsky as an American cognitive and computer scientist, he want to try like he work a lot with perceptron. But he get something that there are limitation of the perceptron that perceptron could not solve x or problems. These problems I will I will describe it in the future. And Marvin Minsky he write the book's name Perceptron that describe why perceptron is not good at trying to solve x or problems. And from now on, after that, after this problem happened, so it's come to a I winter era that mean no one jump into the fields or it will be like the darks dark in many years that no one can solve this problem yeah we call AI winter and yeah how to solve X or problems so for example as you see that perceptron they have just only one node one node of the hidden layer or even they have multiple nodes even they have multiple nodes perceptron perceptron architecture has just only one hidden layer they have just only one hidden layer in this problem of xor so if the input is one and zero if input is one and zero it means that the input come to the input layer one and zero at the same time and then if we want to try to draw the line if we want to draw the line to separate to separate two value to separate two value one and zero out of together we want to separate them but we just have a chance to draw just only one line we cannot solve it you can see if we draw the line like this so we cannot separate the green if we draw like this we cannot separate green if we draw like this we cannot separate layer this is the problem of the xor if the perceptron have just only one layer but this problem can solve easily just adding more hidden layer yes the architecture allow you to draw multiple lines if you put or add more multiple layer is easy right yeah but at that time it take many many computational let's see 1960 
So after that, we get the new problems. It's hard to train the data set if the data set is very complex or the data set is really big. So how to train them? In 1970, so Seppo Liniema, he is the mathematician and computer scientist. He proposed on the way about the back propagation. But unfortunately, his proposed or his method, he's not like proposed on the neural network problems. He just proposed on the mathematics problems. That's why the back propagation that related to the neural networks is happened on 1986. And two guys that everyone known, they are very popular. David Lumerhart and Geoffrey Hilton. He proposed the back propagation and address in the neural network problems. Even in 1970, Seppo, he proposed the master thesis about back propagation. But clearly, we don't recognize him. But yes, he proposed the back propagation. But from now on, that's why I put him on this slide about the history of the neural network. We should know him. We should understand him that he proposed the, the method before Geoffrey Hilton and David Lumerhart. And you see, from now on, we're talking about the perceptron. And and if you want to draw more line to separate the problems, so we just add the hidden layer, just add the more more hidden layer. And currently, the architect of the neural network, we can add from left to the right and go through input layer, pass through hidden layer, and then go through the output, and then we get the result. Or we can call them like a feed forward neural network. But we get the new problems. So what if we want to train the data that is image? The image, the data is not like we can draw in the array. So the data of the image is very special because if you want to understand that this is eyes of person or this is nose of the person or this is the head of the person, the neural network, they are trying to flatten the flatten all the data that we feed to the neural network. That means this architect cannot capture the local features. They cannot understand the spatial features that, that combine with together. This data, when we feed to the neural network in the feed forward neural network, we have to flatten we have to flatten and feed them to the neural network. That's the problem. Perceptron cannot recognize the spatial features or the local features. As you know that the first thing first, so uh, Rosenberg proposed the perceptron and we solved the XOR problem by multi-layer perceptron. Yes, we have the origin of the architect of the convolutional neural network named Neocognitron that solved the local features. And then we have the CNN that we currently use from now on on the present. Let's take a look. The era of local features extraction. In 1980, Kunihiko Fukushima, a Japanese computer scientist, he proposed the research architect of the original convolutional neural network named Neocognitron. The idea of Neocognitron Cognitron is he, are tr he is trying to create the pattern or the system of the brain of the human brain and the human brain works as a trying to memorize image or something that with different parts with different part of the of the brain with different part of the brain trying to capture the pattern that different from the from the from the picture and each layer trying to trying to capture each features and then they combine it in the final result. In 1989, as you know, everyone know, Jan Le Kun, he signed Neocognitron and improved Neocognitron by uh, two things. This architecture, CNN Convolutional Neural Network, it has max pooling and we're chilling. This two thing is, is very, very useful for feature extraction and for trying to capture the local feature area that really, really important to predict the result. If this area is really important, it will pass to the value, to the another layer. And then they're trying to predict on the last output layer. Yes, from now on, we have um, the simple architecture of feed forward neural network. And then trying to create the new architecture to solve the local features data. And then we have the another, another way like create the architecture of the neural network, trying to solve the sequence problems. In 1982, so John Hoffield, he is an 
American scientist. He proposed the Hopfield network that currently we also known as the recurrent neural network RNN. Is a uh, this architecture it allow us to play around with the sequential data. This architecture is represent as a sequence of cells. Each cell represent as a cell memory. He, each cell is trying to memorize the data that go through from the time step one into time step two to time step three and go on. And this architecture is very very useful when you play around with the sequential data such as text such as video or something like that but there's something that's really really we have to face on these problems because if we play around with the data that have really long sequence that really long sequence so when the architecture they are trying to use back propagation to decrease the error that's mean for the when the last cell they want to trying to send the message that uh, they have to trying to decrease the error of the system the last cell trying to send the message of the earlier the t minus one should decrease the earlier by back propagation from the last cell so the problem of the long sequence that means the the message is take a long time to send the message from the last cell to the first cell and the earlier when when it takes really long time the earlier cannot update to the first cell and we got a problem that oh the message is lost or the message said is uh, have the information just a little bit so how could we decrease the earlier because we don't know exactly the message from the last cell is too long the message is vanishing that's mean in 1997 Sepp Hochschritter he was born in German and so he proposed the neural network named LSTM and with this artichoke each cell of LSTM is improved by at more forget gate. This forget gate allow that if some information is not important, we can pass or we can cut off the information out of the memory. If we remove unnecessary information, we can send the message from the first cell to the last cell faster, more faster. And for the back propagation, when we want to send the message of the earlier from the last cell to the first cell, work faster. Yeah. Just recap. So before 1990, so we have like perceptron, multi-layer perceptron, and we want to solve the data that like image. We have neocogniton, and from now on we have convolutional neural network. In the another line, so we want to solve the sequence problems that we have INN, recurrent neural network, and LSTM, long short-term memory network. But in 1990s, 2000, yeah, it's come to the second AI winter. As you see that all of the architect on this area is take more computational resource. It's really, really hard to find the hardware like GPU mean on this time. Deep learning is not popular and no one want to jump on this field. On that time, they work a lot or research on the data mining. The researcher, they are trying to use classical machine learning instead of using the deep learning or neural network because they don't have the combinational resource. Yeah, that's it. So let's take a look on the project ML. Oh, where I should go if I understand about the neural network. So how could I jump to the creating like the project on the M machine learning. I would like to suggest you that if you want to use neural network as the model trying to create your own project in your portfolio. So this is the list that I think is might be useful and you can tell the interviewer to make you outstanding. The first one is you playing with the text, you create the sentiment analysis. The sentiment analysis is trying, you you are trying to predict the sentence or the text that what is exactly how feeling when you read it, like uh, when you read the sentence of the review product. So you feel that this review is very good and sometimes you can feel that this review of the product is very bad. Yeah, just for sentiment analysis, for sentiment analysis, just trying to predict uh, the text or the sentence in the good way, neutral or the bad way or how you feel with this sentence. And the second one is image classification. And you see that the problem in the image is um, 
very hard trying to extract the local features or trying to recognize some image and you can try uh you you could try like cnn architect or trying to build the architect of the convolutional neural network for example trying to predict like uh hot dog not hot dog or something like that <laughs> or maybe you are trying to predict like uh this one is fruit and this one is vegetable something like that or you can try it the third the third is um recommendation system so you are trying to predict that which product that relevant to each customer for example this one is very popular in many business because every business want want to sell something to the customer and if we know that if we understand our customer what they want so we can build a model propose what they want to to them yes this one is very useful if you build it so you can propose them or you can add them at your on your portfolio and the four is like first landmarks detection for example is mm, something like you can recognize the face or the pattern of face of the of the human or trying to to predict their emotion from image of their face and this one is tech generation as you understand about like the architecture of the recurrent neural network and long short term memories so you can use the sequence of an of neural network trying to learn the text or learn the document and trying to uh to generate the text or generate like the story i think most business use uh they want to create churn prediction churn prediction is like something that in the business like uh telco telco is the business that you use internet on the mobile phone uh when you call or something like that so the telco they want to predict that if you use their product low time of their product that mean you are getting to churn from that company but otherwise if you use very very more time on that product so the company they understand that oh you are very potential because you use many you use service you use something that very really too much and if you have low service low service low service is there something of the sick is kind of signal that you are go that you are getting to churn yet yeah, this one is very really useful for the company that they want or want you to subscribe their service by annually and the next one is fraud fraud is uh, the model that are uh, trying to predict something that not normal something that not normal is something like or some behavior that is not normal yeah this one is very useful or maybe you can create uh the model that trying to predict like bitcoin uh tomorrow how they are going something like is will be uptrend or is will be downtrend something like that maybe you can uh maybe you will be rich uh if you use your own model something like that <laughs> okay yep that's it for today the history of neural networks yeah that's the history of before 1990 and thank you very much for our sponsorship kun bila wood chang in and kun anonymous 1234 thank you everyone for today hope you enjoy please like share comment and subscribe thank you very much and let's see next time bye bye